Okay, welcome to video number nine of the Diaries of a Coronavirologist YouTube channel. Today is the 31st of March and we are up to 855,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and a little bit over 42,000 deaths. Again, I'm using the Johns Hopkins tracking website for these data. And today I want to point out as well that there have been about 178,000 recoveries as this is going to come up a little bit in tonight's topic. A couple of little bits of housekeeping before I get into the topic though. Hopefully the sound quality is better today and in videos moving forward. I made my first investment to the YouTube channel and bought an app that should in principle allow me to use the AirPods to record the audio, which should be a lot better and remove some of the background noise coming from the freezer and the PCR machine and the things that are giving that uh, background fluff that people have been commenting about. The other bit of uh, housekeeping stuff, I mentioned in my previous video, video number eight, that we'd submitted our work to BioArchive and we we're waiting for it to come online. For a discussion of what BioArchive is, I'd go back and check out that previous video. The paper came online on Friday, so I'll put a link to it down in the description of this video for anyone who wants to go and have a read. The work is detailing our studies with FDA approved drugs that seem to have broad spectrum anti-coronavirus activity. So drugs that are capable of inhibiting SARS-1, MERS and SARS-2. And in that we specifically followed up on chloroquine. So again, I'd recommend a previous video I put up talking about FDA approved drugs and drug repurposing. Uh, and I obviously talked about chloroquine in that for, because of what we were doing in the lab. But for tonight's topic, I want to talk about immunity and the chance of being reinfected if you've already had COVID-19 and talk about potential for convalescent sera, convalescent plasma therapy, because these are things are all connected. So as I may say a lot when talking about SARS-2 and COVID-19, it's still a little bit too early to say with any certainty about whether there is immunity developing in people who've been infected. This virus has only been around for a few months, need we remind ourselves. However, I can go into a bit more detail, of course. So there's some early data coming out from studies in China that do look potentially promising. So in a paper that was published on BioArchive, a group infected monkeys, so rhesus macaques, with SARS-2 and found that of the four monkeys they used, they all developed signs of having a disease like COVID-19. They suffered some weight loss, they seemed to have breathing problems and developed mild pneumonia. So of the four, one of them was taken for sampling at seven days after being infected with the virus. And then the other three were used for a follow-up study. So two of those were given a re-challenge with the virus, so they were infected again, and the other one acted as a control that wasn't challenged again. And those two monkeys that were re-challenged didn't develop any signs of disease from that second infection, suggesting they developed a protective immune response. So that's promising. So what I can tell you with regards to humans and coronaviruses and immunity is that it does look like there are immune responses that develop and are protective. So with the seasonal coronaviruses, it generally seems you develop about a year, maybe two years worth of immunity to those viruses if you're infected. Part of what plays into their seasonality may indeed be the fact that there is this waning immunity so that you become re susceptible again when it's the winter months and the viruses are spreading well. With SARS and MERS, there's also evidence of the fact that neutralizing antibody response is developed. So what this means is if you take antibodies from people who developed SARS-1 or, or MERS, those antibodies can protect from virus infecting cells in the lab. So they neutralize infection in the lab. And so they, in principle, can protect people from being reinfected with the virus. So it looks like there can be immune responses that are protective against coronaviruses, which is good news, but maybe they're not all that long lived. With SARS, some studies suggest that about two years or so was the average for antibodies persisting in the body. Other studies have suggested it could be up to about 15 years, but whether they're truly protective or just present in the body isn't necessarily clear. So that then brings me on to SARS-2. Something I want to just tackle 
briefly because it has made the news is the idea that there are already people who've been released from hospital who've then gone back having redeveloped COVID-19. It's unclear whether that's a true reinfection, however. The tests are imperfect and there can be false negatives. So it's possible that someone tests negative because the virus was for whatever reason undetectable at the time or the sample wasn't taken properly or whatever it may have been, who then have a rebound in symptoms and need to be hospitalized again and test positive. So those cases don't necessarily mean that reinfection can happen for this virus, something that needs to be worked out. However, the fact that there is precedence for the other coronaviruses having protective responses is good, and potentially it's the same for SARS-2. Now, this has led to an idea of using convalescent patient plasma as a potential therapeutic. So this is an old idea. Transferring blood from someone who's recovered from a disease to someone who's suffering it is a very old idea. It was done during the Ebola outbreak of 2014. It was done for SARS-1. It's been done for polio and chickenpox and various other things. So for this, you have to get patients who recovered from SARS-2 and COVID-19 and have been symptom free for 14 days. You take blood from them, just like a normal blood donation, and remove the red blood cells and keep the plasma. That plasma, in principle, will have antibodies. So you can then put those antibodies into someone suffering COVID-19 as a potential therapeutic in a way to inhibit the virus that is spreading within their body. And this is being trialed in New York City. So there's a lot of cases in New York and therefore it's a good opportunity to really work out if convalescent plasma is going to be protective for active COVID-19 patients. Now, while we may have about 178,000 recovered cases, there is a lack of plasma available from those people. And there are calls for more plasma to be donated. Thankfully, or usefully, maybe, it, seem, it is possible to use plasma from one patient that's recovered in multiple active patients. So about two to three people can receive plasma from someone who's recovered. Time will tell whether it's good therapy and time will tell whether there is a good immune response. But the precedence of other coronaviruses does suggest that humans, we humans, develop a protective immune response, at least for a short period of time, which is great news as this virus continues to spread. If people can become immune for at least a year or two, that really helps us deal with everything going back to all the ideas of flattening the curve and developing vaccines and all this sort of stuff. And I will get to vaccines soon because that obviously is intimately, intimately connected with what I'm talking about tonight, because it's possible that vaccines may elicit a much stronger immune response that could be much longer lived. So that's what I wanted to say tonight about immunity and reinfection and convalescent plasma therapy. So as always, please subscribe if you like these videos, check out the ones I've posted before if this is your first one watching. I've kind of led on each one somewhat sequentially. Please keep posting questions and in the comments. I do look at them. If I'm not responding, it's because I'm busy in the lab, not because I'm ignoring them. So I do appreciate you commenting and giving feedback. And as always, please stay safe, wash your hands, stop panic buying toilet paper and keep calm and carry on. We are going to get through this outbreak. Thanks for watching.